Caddis Maximus here, this time reviewing the Harbor Freight Half Inch Drive Air Drill. Uh, this is a terrible unit. I would definitely give this a thumbs down uh, unless you absolutely need uh, an air drill every once in a while. Uh, and a couple, I mean, it's really hard to justify this. Uh, even though it's cheap, it's really built cheaply. Uh, this is the second one I've had because the spindle broke off the first one. They're really low powered compared to something like an Ingersoll RAM, which weighs and probably is lighter and the same size. This has a fraction of the power, so that's what's disappointing. Uh, some of the issues is is it's assembled just 100% totally dry. Uh, so if you run it just a couple times and forget to put oil into it, the veins start to chip and shatter. Um, uh, it really just has a variety of issues. Also, when you want to rebuild it, uh, a lot of these air drills usually are nice to rebuild because you just use, in this case, an inch and a half uh, across the gearbox, and you can just unscrew it and you know clean it out, get all the metal particles out. Uh, and this one has a it has a real hard time. You got to get everything aligned just perfectly, otherwise it doesn't go together properly and binds up. Uh, on top of all that, I'll show inside how this air drill they use. It's a planetary gear, and the ring gears in the planet are just completely floating, and they're held in tension by compression of uh, this fitting here, and that causes issues where over time uh, it starts to wear out a little divot in the housing here and they will start to slip so you'll be drilling and it'll just start slipping uh, even though the motor's turning so there's just a variety of issues with this air drill uh, even though it is cheap the fit and finish isn't particularly nice because it is their cheap air drill it uses very it uses a keyed chuck but it's a sheet metal collar not a billet steel collar uh, so it's notorious so when you drop these these collars end up getting uh, distorted and then they start slipping on this ring. Uh, the chuck key is of course a very simple chuck key. The jaws are not particularly nice on this chuck. If we can, They're kind of thin and it seems to run relatively true but it's not that great. And so those are really a lot of the negatives. Uh, it is a threaded 3.8 spindle so they do use a chuck lock screw. I've already pulled that out. And we can pull off the chuck. The whole the whole spindle is held in tension. The rear bearing of the spindle and the sleeves for the or the ring gears, the gearbox are all come in compression, and that's what prevents the spindle from going back and forth. Uh, since I was going to show inside this one, show how some of the issues. Let me go ahead and I've already got this chuck started and unscrewed, and you can see. They have a spacer washer behind the chuck, and it could be part of the reason that there's a wobble. Uh, this isn't one I put in there. This is what came from the factory, and it isn't actually a machined flat washer. Even though stamped sheet metal washers can be pretty good, uh, they can still not be quite perfect, and it's surprising just a little one thousandth defect. Uh, somewhere on the surface of this washer will cause the chuck to seat a little bit sideways and will cause it to have uh, uh, an excessive amount of run out or wobble even though the chuck itself and the spindle is straight using something like a, just a I mean this isn't even a, a high grade steel washer just using uh, the cheapest of washers is one issue with this air drill and how it doesn't run true and then you do have two bearings so when it is together the spindle is tight and I will admit that it uses ball bearings on the motor and two large ball bearings on the spindle and that's about all it has going for it but if we do take it apart here and I've already it does have a metal reverse lever, um, and it works. I guess it works okay. It's really reasonably stiff. I haven't had issues with this leaking air. It's just the overall functionality and how this thing slides. So we have a uh, the air motor. We'll get into that in a second here. Whoop! I gotta get this in order. Here we go with the gearbox, and this is one of the issues I was noticing is. You'll be driving, and then all of a sudden the gears will stop. And if you look, I have the gears all locked up but I can spin the spindle and I'll, what happens is you can see that the these uh, ring gears just float in there and it's just this thin metal edge and friction to this front half of the and you can see where it's dented it in where it just doesn't want to sit flat just indents it more as you use it a little bit and then these little these start slipping and if you can see how the gears are turning now if I just put a little tension on there the gearbox works properly and then they start slipping 
And furthermore, if we pull this whole stack out of here, you can see there's the dual ball bearings. This gear, the ring gears are actually split. They're not even one continuous ring gear for both stages of the gearbox. They're split ring gears, and so they want to slip against each other. And then what prevents the bottom one from slipping is this purely from it being against the back of one of the ball bearings. But you can see one of the issues here is that it's larger than the rim of the ball bearing. The ball bearings have a little bit of a taper on their edge. And if we pull off this second ring, you can see it has a very thin edge on it too. And uh, so it's only seating just by a little bit on that back ball bearing. And so just this whole stack held in compression just on threads from an aluminum housing just is not a good idea. So even though they, you know, press fit a couple of bearings on there, they're not rubber sealed by any means. Uh, it's just really uh, not a worthy uh, tool. It just won't hold up. It just won't hold up. And we'll take the air motor out of here so I can show you what I'm talking about. Here we are with the air motor inside that. And so since this is one I just got had replaced, uh, it's just totally bone dry everywhere in the tool. So that's always kind of been surprising to me. And the fact that since it has a through handle air port, um, basically no oil makes it front past this front diaphragm here. Anything that may leak a little bit through the unshield or unsealed bearing, but there's no lubrication for the front gearbox. Uh, so that's another major issue, especially when it's dry. Um, and then these little veins and my last one had a little bit of an issue where they had caught on some kind of burr and had just chipped up the vein pretty badly. So generally, I wouldn't recommend this. I just wanted to show inside so you can see really that it's uh, not, I mean, it's a standard design. Air drills just are all pretty much this style of design, but it's uh, the nicer ones actually use a single piece ring gears that are keyed into here um, and every so they fit securely and hold securely and so that's really the big reason not to get these harbor freights is this uh, they won't hold up for the long term and even under the short term uh, you won't even know you'll think god this is a weak air drill uh, and it is weak but even especially weak once these gearboxes start slipping once it starts slipping it's kind of hard to get the you know you really have to wrench down on this to get it tight enough to prevent them from slipping and when it's a half inch drill there's a lot of tension on a half inch drill bit going through steel and this really isn't meant for it. Uh, especially when you get a lot of sideways loads um, on a, just a tiny little 3 8 spindle. Um, just not worthy. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Caddis Maximus out.